Hello everyone, this is uh, Programmer Mitch here with another practice programming question. Let's hop right into it. So we're continuing the Leak Code Easy collection of top interview questions. The in, in the array category, we're doing best time to buy and sell stock number two. I've already done this question before, but I bundled it up with a, another question and also I messed up the audio. Uh, so I figured that I'll just do it again. So let's read the problem. Say you have an array for which the ith element is the price of a given stock on day i. Design an algo to find the maximum profit. You may complete as many transactions as you like. Buy one and sell one share the, st the stock multiple times. You may not engage in multiple transactions at the same time. I, you must sell uh, the stock before you buy again. Also, you have to buy before you sell. Um, you can't short. Otherwise, that makes the problem pretty easy. So if we look at an example input of 715364, the output is 7 because we would buy at the 1, sell at the 5, capture 4. Buy at the 3 and sell at the 6, capture 3, 4 plus 3 is 7. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, you'd buy at day 1 and sell at uh, on the 5th day for a profit of 4. If we're just decreasing 7, 6, 4, 3, 1, the output would zero uh, would be 0 because you, you just wouldn't do any transaction. There's no profit to be made there. So if we think about this problem, I, I think it's interesting um, because... You can do as many transactions as you like, but you can't buy and sell at the same time. But it's kind of interesting because if you could capture a profit at a given time, you just go ahead and capture that profit. So let's say, let's go to the big board. So if we have one, two, three, four, five. So Per the instructions, we can only buy on, on, on this day and, and sell on this day, and that, that's four. But actually, you can make comparisons for every day, because from one to two is, is one, from one to uh, two to three is one, from three to four is one, and from four to five is one. And these all add up to four. And so you make those comparisons every day, because let's say instead of one, two, three, four, five, we had one, two, three, one, Five, something like that. Well, you could. There's you would want to buy on this day, and sell on this day, so that'd be two. And buy on this day and and sell on this day, and that'd be four, and so that would be six, a uh, total of six. But really, if you just buy one here, and you can't actually buy and sell here, but you're capturing that. Oh, if there's a difference between. Um, the following element and the previous element, you're just going to add that to your total. Because if you can capture it, you will. And if it keeps on going up, then you don't care because you'll capture that eventually. Um, so with this in mind, you just do one, one, and four. And so it's kind of interesting with this problem. But like the, by saying that you can buy and sell every time, um, it, it makes it, it makes it pretty simple. You just have to make that comparison. And then hopefully that makes sense to you. So let's let's make that uh, let's solve that programmatically. So we have some total zero. We have uh, a for loop. This is in JavaScript. We'll do it in Python right afterwards. Um, for let i equal zero, i is less than the prices dot length minus one. We don't want to go to the full um, the full length because we're going to be making a comparison with the current element with the following element. We don't want to have out of bounds, and we uh, increment our index. Uh, that way, I plus plus. So then we just say if the of where one step ahead of where we're currently looking, so I plus one is greater than the prices of I, then we just increment our total by that difference. I cannot type today. And then at the end of the day, you return the total. Let's go ahead and submit and see if that works. Uh, this is um, a fun thing in JavaScript. So if you have a one-line conditional, you don't have to split it up. Um, and you can just you just keep it on the same line without curly braces. But this is the same thing. So we see that we're accepted. Um, yeah, and I think it's kind of fun sometimes to uh, look at some of the run times and see what's quick.
This top runtime uh, uses a reduce, a reducer, which I don't want to get in at, at this point, but um, it's kind of um, an interesting thing to, to to think about, and that are that are heavily opti optimized in, in, in JavaScript. You might have heard the term map reduce. The reduce as a concept is basically you're taking a whole bunch of things and you're reducing them down to, to one thing. So something that's very common is like a sum. So you could you, you could uh, make a sum function with a reduce. This other one right here, just instead of using a conditional, just says well, you just add the ma the maximum of the prices of i minus the prices of i minus one. They're starting from one and ending normally, where I started at zero and ended less than one. It's the same thing. Um, but they're using a math.max and and uh, b between that difference and, and zero. It's basically the same thing as the conditional. I think the conditional is a little bit cleaner, um, but that just comes down to some, uh, preference. Oops, and just a nice infinity shot. Um, let's go back. But yeah, so instead of just doing total plus or equals um, or having this conditional, which we had on one line. Like this, you could just say, well, total is, is the math.max of that difference, and if that difference is less than, uh, less than zero, then, then you just use a zero instead. So it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. And depending on like different conditions on like the leak code servers, they'll, these will spit out different like run times. But so yeah, so that's how you could write that in JavaScript. Let's just quickly. I think I might have this already written out in Python, but let's quickly see what that looks like in Python. Python three, why not? So we have a total of zero uh, for i in range of one. Uh, sorry, zero. We could do one. Uh, length of prices. Um, and now, because we're starting at one, we we want to do like a look back. So if uh, prices of i is greater than prices of i minus one, then we just say total plus equals that difference. And then we just return the total. Yep, there we go. Let's take a look at the more details. So it says 75% of Python submissions. There's some ones over to the left here. Let's see if there's anything fancy. I haven't actually looked at these. Uh, yeah, this is used as like an enumerate. Sell is greater than buy. And kind of like advancing through. Let's see over here. This looks quite long, so I don't want to mess with it. <laughs> but I think you, you can kind of get the idea from here. Let's just do that max, uh, that max method. Um, just to show what it would look like in Python as well. So instead of doing this, we would just say total plus equals the max of the prices of i. Minus the prices of i minus one and zero, and let's, let's see what that looks like. Yeah. So just another uh, solution in Python, same one as in JavaScript, very similar to the conditional as well. Um, yeah, I think this is this is an interesting problem because it sounds harder than it is. You you may complete as many transactions as you like, so you, you think you will. 
ooh, well, then I, do I not want to make the comparison from one step to the other? But if you think about it, well, if it goes down, I don't really care. But if it keeps on going up, I want, I want to have that captured. And that's, that's how you can kind of capture that in the algorithm. So with that said, this is uh, Programmer Mitch. Hope to see you next week. We're going to be doing Rotate Array. Catch ya.